a tiny ocean-going craft, a raft really, called Contiki, captured the world's imagination more than a half a century ago. And now a new film is reminding us how much its voyage taught us about the mysterious ways of the sea and about the equally mysterious determination of man. One particular man, anyway. Serena Altshul welcomes us aboard. Wow, it's rocking and rolling. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing, no. Climbing aboard this small wooden raft, you can't help but feel like you're stepping back in time. Yeah. Just to live here for three months <laughs> and not step foot off the raft yeah. is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it takes you back to 1947, when the original Kontiki crossed the Pacific Ocean, helmed by Norwegian adventurer and anthropologist Thor Heyerdahl. There was no one who could teach us how to maneuver an Inca raft, and we had to learn by trial and error from the very first day at sea. He believed that the oceans were, were roads, basically, 1,500 years ago. Uh, he spent 10 years trying to get his theory accepted. And then when nobody believed him, uh, he made a decision one day to, to go out and prove it. People thought he was crazy. Yeah, and he, he probably was. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, this replica was brought to New York City's harbor to promote Joachim Roning and Espen Sandberg's new film about Heyerdahl and his legendary trip. Do you want your theory to be accepted? Then go ahead, drift from Peru to Polynesia on a balsa wood raft. <laughs> Theirs isn't the first film about the expedition. Heyerdahl himself won an Oscar in 1951 for the documentary he made to accompany the best-selling book about his time at sea. Was he a hero for you? Yeah, yeah. of course. And he touched so many people, you yes. know, including us. <laughs> yeah, and I think he's a good hero in the, in the way that a lot of the idols, as they call it now, that young, young people have, from uh, music and all that, I think uh, Tor is a good alternative. After living in Polynesia, Heyerdahl became convinced the islands had been settled by explorers from South America to the east, and not by people from Asia to the west, as is widely believed. Gradually, the possibility dawned on me that ancient civilizations had arrived here from the coast of South America long before Columbus reached America. To prove the voyage possible, he recruited five companions. We had a female on board. Her name was Lorita. And one parrot to join him aboard the cramped 45-foot-long raft for the 4,300-mile journey from Peru to the Polynesian Islands. The advantage of a raft is simply that water pours out just as quickly as it pours in. To ensure authenticity, Heyerdahl insisted on building the Contiki out of balsa logs, using the same construction methods and materials available to the ancient Peruvians. The ocean, we haven't really started exploring that even. We met Joachim Roning and Espen Sandberg at the Explorers Club in New York, where the very flag that flew on the Contiki still hangs. Two years after the war, people were, they were really looking for something else. This was a real adventure, you know, a bunch of Scandinavians crossing the Pacific on a raft. The voyage of Contiki was a worldwide sensation. Millions awaited the periodic reports from the onboard radio, and the crew became instant celebrities. In a way, it became the world's first reality show, because uh, <laughs> he brought with him two guys that could operate the radio, only one guy that could navigate. But the journey was harrowing from start to finish. The raft was virtually impossible to steer. And without any sort of engine, it was basically adrift at the whim of the currents and the winds. They were completely exposed to the elements and constantly threatened by sharks. As for Heyerdahl... And Thor himself, he was... I mean, he, he was afraid of water. He couldn't even swim. So uh, he couldn't swim. Makes for an interesting character. <laughs> to set sail on this adventure and this expedition and not be able to swim, mm. he really was committing to something extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And in a way, as we discovered, I think that he would rather drown than be wrong. <laughs>
Against all odds, 101 days after they launched, the Contiki reached the shores of Polynesia, ensuring Heyerdahl would be considered among the greatest explorers of the 20th century. He completed the expedition. Mm. He succeeded. But do people believe the theory now? No, and that wasn't the point in a way also, because he wanted to prove that it could be done. What it proved was that the Polynesian islands are within reach of prehistoric vessels from Peru. But while the Contiki's journey is finished... Early man did not see the ocean as a barrier, but rather as a means of communication. Its legend continues to inspire. I think there's a lot of people out there that has a dream to do something, uh, take half a year off work and then climb that mountain or whatever, and maybe this movie somehow can inspire to that. To go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Even if people tell you you're crazy. Or you can't swim. Or you can't <laughs> swim. Yeah. Just really? Go. Maybe learn to swim first. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs>